Right, well we've got the all important tea. Cheers. Let's see, uh, glasses on. Let's see how we're doing. So let's give this a, give it a tap with a knuckle. Ooh, that sounds like a hard pot, doesn't it? I think. <gasps> Can we rest any other? I don't think that's going to deform when I turn it over. But will it come off? The, oh, it comes off the. Look at that. Yeah, that bit, how are we doing? Got a bit of a, got a bit of a texture on the outside. Got a nice smoothness to it. Got a roundness. Got a bit. Of, you can see the uneven top there. Can't you? How about that? Oh, a fail quality control inspection. Um, but we're going to turn it upside down. And to do that, I'm going to get one of these trusty souvenir tea towels. It's, oh, it's got teddy bears on it. That's nice. But look, I've had a pot on here before. How about that? So let's put it on there. I can't see my pencil rings on the board now, so this is where I'm going to have a real challenge. Get it centred. Um, and to do that, we probably need to have the wheel plugged in, don't we? So, Clunk, clang. Um, and this little technique to see if we're going to get it in the middle is let's draw a circle. Is that in the middle? Do you know what? Just for once, I might have got it in the middle. So there we go. Right, so we're going to start taking. Have we got a nice tiny one? Of view and let's take this one again, which is my favourite for this job, and we're going to start taking a bit of clay off here, very slowly, because we want to bring this flat bottom. This is going to take ages, and it's already half five. So let's um, let's work this all the way to the middle. Take off the entire sort of shoulder of this part. So I spent all that time making sure it was round at the top or as round as possible top. Now we want to get it perfectly curved, not just to this flat base, but curved all the way over. And the way to do that is to get on with it. Don't want to do it too fast, or don't want to spin it too fast because you find the tool just skims over the clay without removing any. Right, now you can see here, it wasn't middle enough. That circle I've drawn is definitely off centre. So gives me an idea I should be able to just if I just tug this ever so slightly this way hopefully that's now in the middle again let's try and draw a new line I'm 
work towards this line. Coming off like grating cheese now. And I don't want that to happen, I don't want the bits that come off to stick. But if they stick, I've just got to take them off again and I'm just doing the job twice then. Coming back, just turning the tool, following the curve, hopefully creating a new curve. So ah! That was not supposed to happen. That's because I was digging in too hard. I made a big bloody gouge in the side there. Can you see that? Oops. Oops, oops, oops. So what did I say about 10 seconds previous about making work for myself? I've just made work for myself. So don't gouge in too hard. part of the carriage of the pot. So I've got it reasonably centred. I'm, I'm working towards that that last um, line I drew quite nicely. Bump over that gouge. See how deep that was. Ah. Yes, it's a bit of a gouge, isn't it? But these things happen to me. These things happen to me. And something I said a little bit earlier about when it goes too late in the day and you spend too long at it and maybe you get a bit tired because it just requires a bit of concentration doing this and as soon as you lose that concentration you can get uh, you can get errors so I'm just going to go the other way around now because we want to I want to is it we uh, I want to, it's only me here, I want to just even out that bump a bit. So I'd be interested to see what the glaze does to that, how it, uh, if it forms a little pool in there and I get a different colour. It doesn't feel quite as bumpy this way around, I suppose it's because of the angle of the, <laughs> it feels bumpy because I haven't got there, I haven't got to it. Um, because of the angle I went in when yeah, it's definitely bumpy now. But, you know. See the bee. It's good I'm not drinking enough tea. Tea. Slip, slip, slip. It does feel very soft at the bottom here because you know this clay's not being exposed to the air. It's, it's quite thick. It's not being exposed to the paint stripper. So whereas the rest of the pot has had a chance to dry out because it's thinner and had more heat, had heat and air. 
this is pretty soft so this is why I mustn't gouge and it is easier to work when it's dried out a bit more. It's a difference between grating. Imagine if you grated a bit of mature cheddar and then trying to grate, grate Philadelphia. One's possibly not going to grate very well. camera how we're doing for curvature we're getting a curve at the bottom there so it's not an even curve all the way around is it it's not you know these these different different curves going on but there is curve we have curvage and now what I've done is lost I've lost the holes in the that so I'll get it back on there we go we've got a great big great big ding there you go, you see the X marks a spot. Not to reduce the price ten percent. I remember if I said in an earlier video that I've spent three hours doing this. There's every chance I could spend three hours doing this one. I mean, spent three hours on doing this process on another part. And what I was trying to do with this part was see if I could make it a little bit quicker. So the initial stage is the building up. Did that pretty quick. Did that very quick. I'm not sure I've ever made one that fast before. But this, because you're trying to finesse it. Can't rush it really. It's just going to take as long as it takes. There's quicker ways of making pots. You know, if you want your result fast, is slab building. What I just find this very satisfying to do. I'm going to see if I can actually sit on my bench to do this. Get a little bit, a little bit over it. Yeah, that's working. Not pressing too hard, I don't want to misshape the bottom. The weight of the clay in the bottom here could be misshaping it. We'll see. I'm not going to take it off the wheel and turn it over a lot because if I put it on the bottom again, just that, could, that in itself could flatten it a bit. It's a bit like wood turning, isn't it? I suppose. Keep doing this for long enough, it might turn into a pair of candlesticks. This does, because of the shape of it, does take up a little bit more. 
so without actually working any faster the tool has a faster result if that makes sense just get down with a, another glance So you can see the this is getting small. We've got to that first circle now. In fact, let's let's set ourselves a new target. Let's draw. Now, if we've done that, does that mean we need to just move it a little bit? Do we need to come that way ever so slightly? Let's keep it too far. Because we've got a pot that's not symmetrical, so I'll right across the camera to get my tea. Sleep some tea there. It's not symmetrical, so as I do this, it's going to come off unevenly, so I need to keep adjusting. Make sure I don't move it off line until it's gone around one revolution, otherwise just end up the spiral. Clean that up. Just come back up from here. We actually get any nearer the new circle. I think we are, aren't we? Or are we a little bit off center, aren't we? So let's just go that way a tiny bit. Oops. Let's see what we can do now. So let's come up again. One revolution before we move up. Slug. Get off my pot. Let's go to this one. This being a bit broader. Doesn't gouge in as much. But if I wanted to, I could just use a different part. If I want to gouge more, I can use a tighter curve at each side. still there isn't it but uh dry at a different rate and fall out or make it crack or something so I'm just going to leave it there if I can't smooth it out it's just, it won't be the first pot I've made that's got a got character a special unique feature you 
you see where I'm working? I'm really letting you see the tool on the pot over this side. dry some of this clay getting quite scratchy uh, scrapey. Right, we're anywhere nearer to getting this curve on the bottom. It's tea time. Yeah. Let's, let's have a look. Can you see what sort of a shape have we got? I mean it might you know it might not be necessary to go completely round on the bottom just a please a bit of a pleasing curve because one issue is without a, a foot or you know a bit of a ridge on the bottom that you leave unglazed is how do you stop your pot sticking to the bottom of the um, sticking to the bottom of the kiln um, if you've got glaze on the bottom of your pot but hopefully I've uh, got a little technique to do with that and we'll we look at that when the time comes. Hold it steady. Well, we've got such an oscillation there. And then knocked it. It's been all over the place, so let's do a small circle. Turn a bit that way. Remove a bit more of this shoulder a bit quicker, otherwise I'm not be able to not going to be able to get my dome effect. Upside down dome. So the way I've got it now, it'll still spin round, but it won't have a nice rock to it. It'll have, you know, it'll have a wobble, but it'll more of a, more of a clatter when it wobbles. I don't want it to wobble. Rock. But then I might get to a point where I'm happy with it and say, you know what, that's you know, that's what it is. You don't want to overwork it. What have we got there? What have we got that? Got a bit of a because I'm getting some chatter chatter on the tool aren't I? Is that because some of the clay is inconsistent in its uh, dryness so you know the these recycled clay was some of the clay a bit lumpier don't think I can possibly have any air pockets in there Right, how round are we? Interesting shape. I don't know. I think 
going to give it a bit of a heating up on the, on the top of the bottom. Doing this because this clay is soft, this, this clay has been so thick, this clay hasn't had an opportunity to dry out yet, and it's whereas this is nice, like nice hard chocolate, this is all a bit gooey. So lower down, there's barely anything coming off. And as I bring it up, it finds a softer clay and without any more pressure, a tiny bit more comes off. So there's just a bit more of this shoulder I want to take off. You should have plenty of thickness because well, I'm taking clay off, I'm not really taking a lot off. Even when, it, even, when, even when I've got a bit more coming off, there's not much coming off. But if I'm going to get this domey, a bit more domey, I don't think I'll actually get it completely domey. I don't think I need to get it. If it's a pleasing round shape, if it looks nice to the eye, nice and curved, and if it's got some little ridges, little bits of texture in it, things that make you look, make things that make you question it. that you can keep your car keys in. Bit of pot pourri. So that's getting quite dry that because that's very, that felt very much like grating cheese. That felt a bit like a mature cheddar there. It's like inside cause how are we doing what have we got we've got a bowl we've got a bowl we've got a bowl and we've got it so I'm doing it a little bit more on the bottom because I've got a still got a line in there but it's all around isn't it and it kind of sits in the sits in the hand Quite nicely. I've not misshaped the top by turning it upside down. 
don't think the bottom's actually slumped down. Um, which way it will but that be on the camera? Is that the top and the bottom? I can't work it out. That's <laughs> so let's just do a little bit more. So the next thing we're gonna do of course is put it in the middle again. Which I think miraculously I just did. So let's skim a little bit more off. I mean, if it doesn't wobble, it's probably more practical, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, do pick, you know, do you want a wobbly pot? I, you know, I like making a wobbly pot, but what can you do with a wobbly pot? And if you put the cat's dinner in it, you'd end up all over the kitchen floor, wouldn't it? It would be impossible for the cat to eat out of. And the cat's not going to say, oh, that's an interesting pot. Oh, I really, I really like the way you did that. Oh, what's that little gouge outside? Oh, what happened there? Well, I love the way the glazes run together. It says, no bright dinners just gone all over the kitchen floor. So for the cat, your pot would be absolutely useless. Get a bit of a spiral thing going on here now. Where are we going? Oh, don't stop. <laughs> don't know what's going on with this wheel. So everybody must be too old turning on the ratchet cookers and they Power's surging, it keeps speeding up and slowing down. I do hope that's not an air bubble. Bit of late afternoon, early evening sunshine coming through there. That means it's going to pull down in a minute. Clay's dried out a bit because I'm getting there. Uh, I'm getting this where the clay's coming away. Um, and I quite like that. I do like the effect you get there. The effect I don't like is. Mm, maybe it's not an air bubble. Maybe it's just imperfection. Now, I can see this because this is a mixture of clays, because there's some buff clay and terracotta clay thrown in the bucket together. When I was uh, just preparing it, it had a really nice kind of streakiness to it. And uh, I've made a pot where that actually came through in the finished result. You could see these streaks of terracotta and buff, and it was quite interesting. Apart from the fact that when I fired it, 
Um, it was quite a tall, slender pod. It looked a bit like somebody's left leg. It was a rather uncanny, fleshy colour, so uh, chuck some glaze on it pretty quick. sun coming through the window and the fact that it's getting really warm in here it's going to mean this clay is going to dry out PDQ so let's have a stop tape and see where we're up to because surely it's got to be near the end of working time <laughs> there are some funny shadows going on here aren't there there's some moves around and the uh Ideal for showing you what I'm doing. Spindle. Right, okay. So what do we got? That is it. That's all we're doing with that. Apart from, I'm going to do just a little bit of finishy. Um, now we've got this wooden tool with the curved edge. You can just use that for a bit of. Nice bit of finishing off. Going round and round and up that, that fast. Not so fast buster. I'm not sure I really need to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. Just to sort of pat down. Because what we've been doing, we've been taking clay off. Might be that we've been loosening up the surface a bit, so. I don't even know if such a concept exists, I might have just made that up. I can't see what I'm doing because of the shadow, you probably can't see either. So I'm just using this curve to come to the top. Just to smooth, just to even, try and even this curve. I'm going to sit down to do this. With a shadow. Just using the yeah, holding a bit of an angle, not bringing it up too fast because it will feel that bump going on. That character for four in that imperfection. Just coming out over the top. Just so you can press the surface a little bit. Now that's not too bad. I can see here that I have actually got a little bit of a point. I think what's going to happen with this pot, it's going to kind of, it's going to list to one side. Why not? Might stand perfectly straight. Tool on the tea towel because that will fly off an angle. Right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the big rubber rib, rubber kidney, whatever you want to call it. Give it a clean, don't want any bits of dry clay dragging around, dry it off. And this one's a bit bigger. So seven skill, which way you look at this, you'll look that way, you can see it's made in Taiwan. Uh, and we're just going to let that ride, do nothing much more really than ride over the surface. So we're only moving it once the pot's gone round one complete revolution and then we don't get sort of spirals and diagonal lines. This is why Patience is quite a good thing to have when you're doing this. You find the longer the afternoon goes on, the closer you get to your meal time, the less patience you have. Or is that just me? There's that bump, 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 bump. And 
patience, 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 because we're aiming for the middle. Taking time to get to the middle, because you've got a bit of a groove there. Just take it off and make position and clean it up. Let it go on there nice and gradually so we don't put a gouge. Going to the middle, yeah, we've got a bit of a, I think that's the last remnants of one of the lines I drew with a pointy tool. And uh, we want to kind of smooth that out. And there's a bit of roughness. And we just want to get that out as well. We'll go back. Go over. Up again. There's some little funny bumps in there, but you know when that's dry, can you see those? This light, I've not tried to video in this kind of light before, so it's not really showing up, is it? But there's a couple of little bubbles on there, but when that's dry, I'll, I'll probably just be able to um, work those out. I've got a bit of a spiral thing going there, so the last thing I usually do with this tool is to just come give it a polish if you like over like that over like that to give it a bit of a turn over like that and then you get these little little ridges little bits of peely clay but when it's dry they'll brush off he says it's just clean might as well have not bothered doing that last thing because I was trying to take all these little ridges out but I've just put them all back in so this is overworking isn't it this is actually doing something that they did not need doing and the risk that you get a bit frustrated and you're messing up But if we've got some little ridges, the clay, uh, the glaze will do interesting things. It will still be round. And I do tend to be happier with pots that do have little ridges in. Even though I'm trying, I try to make things as smooth as possible. I'm happy with the finished result when they're not as smooth as they could have been. Never happy. Never satisfied. So that's that. Done. Done, 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 done. Um, let's have a look at it. That's what the little slides will show you. I'm just going to go over it with a stripper for a handle because it's a little bit sort of clammy. Give it a scoot.
So, how can we wear the light? Oop, got a big load of bloody debris on it, but we'll wear that off it. When it's dry, I think, I'll wear that off in a minute. We've got that ding. You can see as it's beginning to dry, it's pretty well, it's getting these ridges in, that sort of chattering of the tool. It's light, it was nice and warm on the bottom. Uh, I can't hold it to the camera to show the inside because the light's all wrong. Probably needs a little bit of treatment, but I'm gonna inside but just to smooth it up we'll get some bits of debris out and a little bit work on that top edge. Now I'm gonna do that when it's dry because if I need to I can just um, give that a bit of a, a spray mist from the bottle. But let's have a look, let's see if we can have a look. Can we see in this light? Is it is it round? Get my hands out of the way. Have we got the roundness we wanted? We've got some roundness. We've got a bowl. We've got a nice curve all the way around. It's not, you know, it's not spinny pointy on the bottom. But that might be quite nice. We've got that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a mess. I'm gonna see what I can do with my thumb on that. I really don't like that. So it doesn't actually do anything on the inside. Overwork, overwork, overwork. So I'm just trying to get the clay in to the gap with my finger and the thumb. But when it dries and when it fires it's probably just going to open up. It doesn't look quite as bad. So there you are. Was that worth spending the afternoon making a part? I think probably. I'm going to put it back on the cloth. I'm going to leave it upside down because I want that bottom to dry out. So I'm happy that the top edge is not going to deform. Uh, and we're going to have a bit of a tidy up. And go and have something to eat.